President Mohammed Buhari has met with the leaders of the National Assembly over the ongoing protests demanding the dissolution of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS. Present at the meeting and held at the State House in Abuja were President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila. Following the meeting, the leadership of the National Assembly called for an end to the protest marches across the country. The time has come for the protest to stop because government needs to have sufficient time, uh, a clement environment to implement the demands of the protesters. We also need to have our economy to continue to go on. When, when you try to stop everybody from uh, engaging in their lawful businesses, closing uh, roads to markets and, and other uh, economic places, we distract the economy of the country, and that is not the best way to go. We still have with us Femi Lawson, public affairs analyst, and Ladipo Johnson, who is a lawyer as well as a public affairs analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for your patience. Welcome back. And um, I'm going to, of course, uh, start with uh, Femi Lawson this time. Um, it's another call from Nigerian leaders, uh, this time uh, from the leadership of the National Assembly and, of course, their representatives. Um, how impactful will this be? Well, I think uh, one of the reasons why you know, the protesters are still on the street as we speak is, of course, the reality of the disappointment of the past. You know, we've had situations like this in the past where you know, political leaders come out and make you know, very fancy promises and you know, that are never implemented. On this same agitation for police reform, you remember that sometimes in 2018, you know, there was a committee, the panel is initiated to address this issue. This panel came up with a series of recommendations, and as we speak, the government never took any serious steps. And that is why it looks like you know, the protesters do not have confidence yet in the willingness of the government to address you know, to their, to their demand. But I think every you know, situation, every protest or every grievance must get to a point where we must come to the table to discuss. Civil rights, the protests, like I said, are civil rights, but even the world war, as, as even as civil war as the case may be, wherever we are, what happening in any part of the world, always ends you know, on the table. It is important that the protesters now begin to identify leaders who will engage government on its promises. I'm not you know, given to the position of people like Senate President Ahmed Lawal, who think protesters should just back in the road and return back to their home. It is, of course, for people like Senate, uh, Senator Ahmed Lawal, they are more concerned about their own economic prosperity and whatever they are losing economically to this protest. But I think the protesters should, at this point, begin to engage government on its promises by appointing leaders that will sit with government and demand, you know, immediate implementation of those agreements, you know, that government will, you know, come up with, with them. So we cannot, of course, perpetually be on the street. Protesters cannot continually be on the street, but continue for being on the street, like I said, as long as they are peaceful, it's within their right. But, well, but Mr. Lawson, are, what do we do then? When these young the people, you Mr. Know, Lawson, in, in. Mr. Lawson, what do we do then? Because from all indication, these young people are saying that they do not um, want any leader, that the protest is leaderless. And we've also seen uh, some of the issues when uh, some representatives of these young people were called for a meeting. What do we do if these people are saying, the government, they know our concerns, we do not need anybody to uh, represent us, just go ahead and address our problems? Well, it is a very frightening dimension because even in the head of you know, animal stories, music, they will always identify leader. You cannot have such a movement to remain leaderless. The truth is that if we continue to have a mass movement such as you know, the NSAS movement and you want to keep saying you don't have leaders, then it has to do with how trustworthy you are you know, presenting you know, even yourself to the, to, to the public. Because the truth is that 
every congregation must have its own leader. And we cannot, of course, expect that those you know, demands are demands that can just be met overnight. The truth is that a lot of them have to do with issues of constitutional reform. A lot of them have to do with issues of institutional restructuring. It is not everything that has to do with you know, disbanding staff overnight or removing the IGP overnight. No. The fundamental areas of their demand that are institutional, that has to do even with the Constitution, that has to go through the National Assembly, that has to go through the processes of restructuring. And in discussing this, this has to be done on the table. The truth is that the protesters must come to realize that they are, they are at the point now that they must identify leaders that will continue to engage government on their behalf. We cannot continue to claim we don't have leaders and we want to be on the street until the constitutional reform takes place when we, we are, the National Assembly is likely shut down. You know, you want to be on the street until you know, those restructuring takes place. It may not be feasible. But if there are, of course, the immediate demand, like the disbandment of that notorious, you know, court, court stars, you know, like, you know, call for certain immediate steps, like demand for compensation of families, of victims, those are, of course, can be done in the short term. But the real issue with the police, as it is today, it's not about with the IGP or, or the existence of one notorious court, court stars or not. It's their institutional issues. There are issues that have to do with, you know, constitutional reform and, you know, proper restructuring. And this right. will not be achieved, you know, by merely staying on the street, you know, and agitating. So there are issues that have to be done. There are issues that even require the hippies of citizens. All right, Let, let's get um, Mr. Johnson's uh, two cents on this particular issue of uh, the, I mean, the protesters saying we do not have a leader. This protest is leaderless. It, it, it's not going to give, you know, a productive outcome. Like I said, core of these issues are issues that have to demand interest of citizens, the civil society, other key stakeholders, and that would only be achievable when there's dialogue, when we sit on the table. It's not going to be achieved on the street. And that is why the protesters at this point must begin to select credible leaders and credible representatives among them to engage government and other stakeholders in order for us to move forward. All right. I, I'm hoping that um, Ladipo Johnson can quickly speak on that also. Um, the conversation about leadership for the, from the side of the protesters. Um, do you understand when they say they don't have any leaders, government knows what they want, um, and so they are not necessarily looking for ways to negotiate? Well, um, I feel that um, it's due to the fact that um, they've learned from the history of Nigeria, that most times when you have um, identifiable leadership, one, it is easier for the to break you up or for the intelligence agencies to break you up. Two, it is easier to have those people, unfortunately, that is what we have in our country, brought into a room, settled or whatever, given money, and then everything um, um, dissipates. That is why they're saying that. But as Mr. Dawson has said, there will come a time, and I believe it is a natural progression. If they begin to see things, proper actions taken by government, then there will come a time there definitely uh, a lot of those protesting will gravitate towards the words and the actions of several individuals, and those people will naturally become the leaders of the protest. I have no fears that at the right time, more concise demands, more direct demands will be made to government by certain individuals, and that, that those demands will be supported or will um, uh, supported by the majority of um, the protesters. So I think it will happen naturally. Yes, they can say that, and the reason why they're saying that is not far-fetched. They know that once they have leaders, it will be easy to pick them up. All right. Still, still with you, Mr. Um, Ladipo Johnson. Um, the 
I, I want you to respond to, to this. Um, I, some people would say the federal government didn't you know, take a lot of time in implementing a hike in petrol prices. Um, but now the federal government is asking for time to implement the promises. Um, how, how would you respond to that? Why do you think protesters, of course, aren't given uh, that any consideration? Um, I'm sorry, if that was meant for me, sorry, you, uh, you were breaking. I heard hike in petrol, the federal government didn't do something. But I didn't hear the right. I'm, I'm going to take the question again, Ladiko Johnson. Um, according to law, because the federal government should be given time and allowed to implement the promises. But some people have said, um, how much time really, you know, um, is the government asking for or would the government take? You know, because it didn't take that much time to do all the things that affected the lives of yeah. Nigerians. <laughs> well, look, uh, that is, again, I believe that is um, spot on. As I said much earlier, if government taken some steps that were concrete steps and everyone saw, oh, this is serious, then we wouldn't be saying what, saying what we're saying. Government showed, was, uh, showed inaction. And the vice president has admitted to that. So yes, they need time. I hear what um, Bajabi Amila says and um, the Senate president. They need time. But you haven't shown, you haven't shown us that, um, you haven't showed us that you're serious. They haven't. The youth haven't seen that. If you have, sorry, I'm diverting a bit. If you say, oh, we're looking at the police, and we know that we have to look at the welfare of the police. We cannot look at the welfare of the police because government cannot afford it without looking at our salaries in, at the National Assembly. 400 and something people have been budgeted You've done a budget, proposed budget, 120 something billion for 400 and something people for 2020-21, whilst for Nigerians as a whole, education, 40 something billion, healthcare, I think 40 something billion. But for, for 400 and something people, you're talking about 120 something billion. That shows that these people are joking. They're not serious. Okay. When they become serious, when they begin to say, oh, looking at this, looking at, looking at this, then you will see no one wants to stand on the streets um, for 24 hours um, under the sun, knowing right. that they could be attacked by hoodlums. I assure you, they don't want to. Okay, stay with you still, uh, Mr. Johnson. I think there was a miss up earlier. Um, there are those that are saying that the president should address the youths. Again, they are, the youths actually have taken to social media. Some celebrities are part of this call, asking the president to address the youth, angry youths. He's only done that once. Uh, but then there are those who also say the vice president has been in the news apologizing, issuing statement, urging the youths to calm down. Isn't this enough? Obviously, it isn't. Oh, sorry. Mr. Johnson, the question is for you. Okay. Obviously, it isn't enough. The vice president has spoken. He's spoken well. Um, but it obviously isn't enough. Okay. We need more. The youth, the youth need more. They need concrete actions. Government has spoken several times and they have not kept to their words. And as you said earlier, when, I mean, when the, uh, when the fuel increase was coming, it came. When government wants to act, it acts. So when you have a situation, your IGP is still there, you said you've created SWAT, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but maybe it wasn't expedient in the heat of the moment to have announced that. You understand? It's as if, really, it's as if, I don't know who the advisors are. I don't know. 
it's as if they do not have the their acts together. They don't have it's a, it, it's it, I, I don't want to say it's a simple thing. It isn't a simple thing when you're dealing with emotions of millions of people. But really, this thing shouldn't have gotten out of hand, and it still shouldn't get out of hand. They just have to think outside the box, be more direct, be more proactive, and don't sit there and say, oh, after a while, they'll get tired. Because as you said earlier, it could go the other way. They could either, the protest can either wind down or they could go the other way. Because when you look at the population of youth we have in this country and the population of the youth that are unemployed, we're sitting on a keg of gunpowder. All right, I'm gonna go throw one uh, more to Femi Lawson this time. Um, the National Executive uh, Council's decision to delegate some of these responsibilities to the state governors. Um, do you think that would, of course, might help out in any way? Like I said, uh, I read through you know, some of the resolutions of the National Economic Council, and I think uh, some of those steps to me looks more like a fire brigade approach to solving this problem. Uh, whatever we are doing now that we, are, you know, we expect to be enduring has to be constitutional. We must not address this issue in a fire brigade approach just because we are in a haste to push these young people off the street. Mm -hmm. Every step that has to be taken now must be backed up by the law. Look at the National Human Rights you know, Commission's you know, directive to set up a panel in the first place. You know, it was one action that has been faulted because this is a commission that, as we speak, mm -hmm. does not have a board that is constitutionally empowered to empower you know, such a commission of inquiry. But today, the same you know, council gave you know, CD directive. And so I think we must approach this issue using constitutionality, you know, so that we can have an enduring, you know, you know result. What majority of what, you know, the NEC has directed are not backed by law. They are just fair because, in my opinion, and I think one thing that is missing as we speak is the fundamental need, very fundamental need for the president to speak to these young people. It is going to be very significant. It is going to make a lot of impact that whatever the vice president or that council is saying presently, which of course has practically fizzled out because the young people have practically lost you know, confidence. And some of those decisions, like I said, are they backed by the laws, the existing laws? No. We must use instrumentality of the law, and that is why we can't begin to hold people accountable for their actions. A lot of promises, a lot of such declarations have been made in the past, but because they are not you know, backed up by any law, people can just wake up tomorrow and turn them around. Don't be surprised that you know, one IGP will come back tomorrow and, of course, bring back these same stats that we are talking about. So we must do our thing make sure they are properly legislated upon, they are properly documented in our law, and that is why this can be a journey, and that is why how we can build confidence in the mind of the citizens. So I think that intervention has not really made you know, so, so, so much of significant impact in resolving this issue. All right, uh, I think uh, that's all the time that we have for this conversation. Ladipo Johnson, uh, thank you so much for stopping by and for sharing your thoughts with us. And, Thanks um, for having me. Thank always, you. always, and always a pleasure. And of course, Femi Lawson also. Thank you for um, also being with us this morning. Mm -hmm. It's my great pleasure. All right. So, uh, um, some key things I took away from this conversation: um, they are advocating strongly that some sort of leadership uh, be, you know, brought out from these protests, uh, so to give it a sense of uh, more coordination. People verbalizing, verbalizing rather what these protesters want. And then something else, uh, the responsibility of celebrities um, in being careful with the kind of information they put out on social media. And they, they, sh they should not let their um, uh, passion override their sense of responsibility because they have so many people following them and taking their word yes. as you know the right thing, truth. Um, I make reference to the um, conversation about expecting some foreign organization to come in and intervene in our domestic uh, issues. So uh, those are some of the um, takeaways for me this um, morning. So, so the, I feel 
um, the protesters, like one of our guests mentioned, have learned from the past. The NLC has leadership. The Nigerian Medical Association has leadership. ASU has leadership. Um, most of these young people have been silent, but they have been observing what has been happening with negotiating with the government. Um, when these bodies negotiate with government, they know how it eventually turns out. And a lot of times, you know, nothing comes out of those negotiations. It is promises after promises, and you know, eventually four months later, there's another strike. So they have seen these things. They know how it always plays out. They also, are, I feel, are trying to not have anyone in particular that can be bullied into submission. And so they say there's no particular leadership. We are. Um, yeah, that, that the sentiment, leadership. wild right, like um, um, I think either Mr. Lawson is saying that wild right um, still leaves. At the end of the day, somebody still needs to be part of this panel that is being set up. If there is to yes, be, there will be. I, a, I believe, a I believe that they, So somebody has to be chosen. Some, and some people have been, At some point, needs to be chosen from among these protesters. I have seen that over the weekend. I also saw that a few names were mentioned to be part of these panels. You know, but those are panels, the investigative uh, panels, the panels of inquiry. You know, that's not necessarily the leadership of you know the protest. Those are just people who would represent the the protesters. Well, in the, if, in the if, you, if you ask me, some of the things that I would what mention, is needed. Some is of not the things. I mean, there would, those panels would be set up, no doubt. People would definitely be there. You know, but they don't necessarily you know um, represent the leadership of you know. They, they are maybe just people who they feel are intellectually sound enough to represent them and be a part of a conversation. Some other thing I would mention is. The body language of the government has not in any way helped. In the last couple of years, it hasn't helped. Um, I'm sure you also got to see the video of uh, the governor of Lagos State when he was presenting, you know, um, uh, you know, his findings to the uh, the president. And that little uh, I, I do have a comment a on that, but um, it, it's not right for television. So I will, you know, take a back seat I'm, on I'm that. Not, particular I'm only just pointing out the body yes. language of the government and how people interpret these things. And so that's why it's difficult for people to believe what you say. Because your body language doesn't show that you mean more than these Someone else statements. will argue with you that they have been very vocal to come out and say, we support the youth, the governors. You see some of them joining uh, the protest, even though that shouldn't be the correct thing to do from what analysts are saying. But they have been vocal about being concerned. But what the youths are asking is action that's that why I said follows. body language is very different from words. All right. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.